Hi everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and today I'm actually going to be going over all of my empties for um, July pretty much. So um, I did want to comment, I was trying to like fix my hair to be presentable um, for videos but I, I really want to grow it out and I used to have like my hair starts to curl once it gets to a certain length so I had like this big bunch of curly hair on top and I think I could do it again um, but the thing that always happens is like right the sides start to get poofy but the top can still lay flat so I have this like weird poof side flat top thing and if I try to pull my hair back and like spike it up it doesn't look that great like there's just this awkward period where my hair is too is short enough that's doing all this weird stuff but it's not long enough to look even and I just have to like push past it like push past those like four to six months of awkwardness before it like kind of evens out but I might end up having to get it trimmed around the ears because that little piece anyway um I am doing a hair product review uh here in the next week or two weeks I'm really excited about so I can kind of talk more about my hair but I just I tried for a good long time to get that little guy to sit flat but it's just not happening <laughs> anyway so this is an empties video not e we're not even talking about hair care um a lot of these or a few of these products are complete empties like totally done use them all within the month of july they're totally empty some of them are products that i want to i used for you know a duration in july but want to hold, I did my full review of them after hitting like the one month mark, but I want to hold on to the rest of it and save it uh, just in case I need it as a backup. And some of these, I use them, um, I guess there's only one, but I use them, wasn't super impressed by it. And so I'm just going to give it away to a friend, but I'm done with it. So I wanted to mention it in a video before I pass it off to somebody else. So, oh my goodness. Not, these are in no particular order. I'm just grabbing stuff. Uh, this is the Awesome um, Australia. This is their Double Mist Serum. This is a um, sister brand to Huamisa, and it was just a very interesting product that I found on Amazon. Um, I hadn't really heard of this brand before, and I have some K-Beauty skincare friends and, you know, fellow fans of K-Beauty that live in Australia, and they hadn't heard of this brand either, but it's from the same brand that makes Wamisa. It's the ENS Beauty Group, and so they own Wamisa, Awesome, and a couple other brands, but this is a uh, dual-phased serum, so there was a liquid here and then an oil at the top, and I believe the oil it was comprised of jojoba oil was kind of the top one on the list. Um, I believe so. Um, there's also quite a few essential oils, bergamot, rose. It had kind of a lavender oil in here as well. It kind of had like a um, citrusy kind of herbal scent to it, but it was a shake to use. So you shake it and you spray it. And I use this not only as a serum in my PM routine, but I used it throughout the day just if my skin was feeling a little dehydrated or um, dehydrated or just needed a little bit of refreshment. What I liked about it is that it had a lot of hydrating ingredients and it has aloe leaf extract, apple extract, tomato, um, there's the jojoba seed oil, camellia leaf, um, or camellia leaf extract, yeah, and then licorice root extract for some calming. So I found it to be hydrating, calming, but the jojoba oil actually helped to lock in that hydration. So it almost felt a little bit more like a blend, like an oil, kind of serum mixed with the mist, which is kind of what you get from these bi-phase products. So I was generally really happy with it. I would recommend it to um, pretty much anyone who's looking for some um, more deeper hydration and nourishment from a facial mist. You can also use it in your serum step during your normal routine. But those with super oily skin might not like that it does that dewiness and that hydration, there's also a little bit of a glow or a sheen from the oils in it. So those people with oily skin might not like that slightly oily residue. It's very minimal though. Also, if you are um, trying to stay away from fragrances of any kind, whether that be synthetic or essential oil based, if you're just avoiding those in general, there is um, bergamot, rosewood, lavender, um, and rose, 
flower oil all in this one formula and it is quite fragrant. I didn't mind it. The fragrance does dissipate after a little bit and I'm actually trying to stay, start steering away from mentioning that in every single product review. I feel like I'm just kind of falling into that trend of everyone's a little bit scared of <laughs> fragrance and essential oils and it's all anyone's talking about right now and I really don't take an issue with it until I have an issue. You know, if my skin doesn't react to it in a really poor way, like with breakouts or irritation, then I used to not ever even mention it. it just I would just say it smells like X, Y, and Z and not really talk about, well, here's all the essential oils and is that okay for me? And it might not be okay for you. So comment below if you, if you like having all of the disclaimers and like hearing about all of this, regardless of whether or not it it negatively impacted my skin, but I think I want to go back to only mentioning it if it was a problem. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. You let me know how you feel about the whole fragrance essential oils thing. I, I'm going to continue to use products that have both synthetic and natural fragrance, but like I said, I think I'll probably only mention, you know, dive into that and really pour over it if my skin reacted poorly. Otherwise, I'll just say it smells like watermelon or whatever. So um, that's it. I, like I said, I would re recommend this unless you have a sensitivity or if you have particularly oily skin and don't like that residue. So this was a win. Um, another empty that I have is so weird is, and I mentioned it in the Get Unready With Me, but this is the Stridex Pads Maximum. I ended up loving these. I, I was scrolled past them on Amazon and I was like, I, I had to take a look out of curiosity because I think I used these like back in like sophomore year of high school and they, I just associated them with like all the astringent toners and the pro, uh, proactive that I used to use. And like, it just all got blurred together in that me trying to fight my, my um, acne at the time. And so I just, it got clumped in with everything that was drying and astringent and too harsh. But I, I scrolled through the ingredients list. I was like, these are alcohol free. They are basically just a 2% salicylic acid toner. That's the uh, pads that are soaked in a 2% salicylic acid or BHA toner. So I gave them a shot and they actually worked really, really well. They helped to uh, minimize uh, some of the larger or more clogged pores on my skin, helped to battle acne. Um, they were just a really nice, basically a nice 2% BHA toner in the form of a pad. So very convenient. The pad is embossed, so it has like, it gives a little bit of physical exfoliation along with the chemical exfoliation, but I didn't find them to be very harsh. And I was actually able to use these alongside other acids without a problem like AHA. I've been using tretinoin and I kind of paired this alongside the tretinoin and the AHA, which is in my Curology, it's azelaic acid, and didn't have an issue with them. So these are a win um, for, I think, for acne-prone skin, for oily skin. This is the By Wish Trend Vitamin 75 Maximizing Cream. Uh, this is a kind of me light to medium weight moisturizer that um, kind of has like a, a watery feel to it, but there is a bit of weight to it and it features sea buckthorn water as its main ingredient or vitamin tree water, which is um, used here to help um, retain hydration. Um, it helps to support vitamin C. So if you have vitamin C in um, some of your other products, because this contains vitamin E, they're a really good pair. Um, so it's used for just kind of revitalizing the skin, maintaining hydration, and um, and boosting like kind of your nourishment levels, but it does so in kind of a lightweight format. So it's not incredibly heavy like a night cream, um, even though you will find sunflower seed oil in here pretty high on the ingredients list. There's macadamia seed oil, um, palm oils in here as well. Um, so there's some pretty heavy duty emollient ingredients that you that are normally used to kind of lock in hydration. Um, you'll find them in like night creams and eye creams just because they're there to combat dryness, but they do it in such a lightweight format comparatively to some other products that I've used. So I really didn't know what to think about this when I when I ordered it and got it in. I just kind of got it because I wanted to try some more by Wish Trend products. And it just the first few times I used it 
it was like, okay, it's just doing its thing, you know? And before you knew it, it just kind of blended into my routine and I wasn't grabbing it like, oh wow, like I'm loving the results from this or this is incredible. I was just using it every day without complaint, but I think that's where this product kind of shines. It's just a good, decent, middle of the road moisturizer that I think a lot of people would agree with or be happy with because it's not too heavy, but it's not too light. It didn't throw my skin one way or the other. It didn't make me feel dry. It didn't make me feel greasy. I just kind of had this nice baseline and I think this was a big part of that, um, which has been so nice since I am using tretinoin. I'm on Cural or I'm on the Curology program and that can really throw your skin off and throw you for a loop. And this just kind of help to maintain those moisture and nourishment levels. Even if I switched up my toner or switched up my essence, this this was pretty nice. I could see um, those with oily skin really liking it because it's gonna provide you that hydration without feeling greasy or too heavy. Um, for super dry skin, this, this still might not be enough for you. You might want that heavier kind of creamy feel um, or something that is just a little bit more dense, in which case this might be a good um, product to blend with another moisturizer. So if you wanna kind of do a combo moisturizer, especially at night, um, I think in my, my written review, I said, this is pretty much what I was hoping the Oat So Simple water cream from Crave Beauty would be, but that one skipped all of the emollient ingredients. So it, it's almost like an incomplete moisturizer. This kind of fills in those gaps in it with a similar format, texture, feel. So if you're trying to debate between the two um, or trying to decide if you want to go for the Oat So Simple water cream, um, and if you have dry skin and need something with um, some emollients, some oils in it, but it's done in a nice way, I would maybe try this one out um, first and see how you feel about that. So there's that one, emptied that one, that one's a win. And we've got the Neogen H2 Derma Deca Serum Spray. This is a serum spray from Neogen. It's a pump style spray mist. Uh, that can also be used as a serum. It kind of falls into the same grouping as this. Um, I I use this, this is like the first, I think this might have been the very first serum or at least the very first facial spray that I bought back in 2018 when I started using Korean beauty products or shopping on Sogo Glam essentially. And I really liked it back then. I was very, very happy with it. Um, felt like it provided like a, a burst of hydration, especially throughout the day. It was very refreshing, maybe even a little bit calming. This time around, because I've been wanting to do some retro reviews or like second, um, you know, second look reviews. So two years later, I used it again and it wasn't terrible, but it didn't wow me in the way that it did the first time around. It does have a nice watery feel, it absorbs nicely, feels good on the skin, feels very refreshing and can provide some um, some short-term hydration, but I just didn't find it to be particularly nourishing for my skin. Um, it didn't help to keep that hydration going like all day. Like this is something that I'd spray on, feels good about a couple hours later. I was like, okay, well, we're gonna need some more of that. So I just didn't, it, it didn't wow me in the way that it did before. It was just a little bit more basic. And I think it's because, um, let me grab the, in I don't even know if I have the ingredients list for it anymore because it was on the plastic packaging. I think there is an emollient ingredient in here, but there, and there's also essential oils, which are just for fragrance, but um, there are some oils in here. It just didn't give me as much in the way of like locking hydration in as this serum or the double mist serum from Awesome did. Also, I think there is quite a bit of alcohol in here, which helps everything to penetrate more quickly, but it just means that that feeling of like hydration just kind of went away a little bit faster than something like this, which is more rich in formulation. So that's kind of how I felt about this spray. First time around two years ago, and I think my skin was even extra oily or even more oily than it is now. And so um, I think I liked it because it, felt refreshing, it felt cooling, and maybe it was even balancing some excess oil production. But this time around, eh, not, not so much. Didn't love it, but didn't hate it. It's just kind of middle of the road product. 
but I did finish it. So that is, that is a good sign. It's gone. <laughs> um, I just burned through it because every couple, basically before I would reapply sunscreen, I was like, kuh, 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 kuh. then sunscreen a couple hours later, I was like, all right, 12 more sprays and then sunscreen. So that's probably why I got through it um, without bailing on it, I guess. Um, and then we've got two sunscreens that are um, almost empty. I have just a little bit left of each one. They're from Coats. I already did a mini review of this brand or these two products um, in a previous review. So um, go look for that. It should say Coats photo shoot or Coats mini reviews. They were pretty much full reviews because I had my opinions about them already, but now that I um, have had another week or so with them, I've just got a little teensy bit left in each one, but I'm gonna hold on to them because I really like them. These are um, both mineral-based sunscreens using 20% zinc oxide. This is a Flawless Complexion Tinted SPF 50, and this is the Sensitive Skin Non-Tinted SPF 40. So both use that gentle, what they call gentle or vanishing zinc oxide. And <clears throat> outside of that, there's just various silicones, preservatives, that kind of thing. There's not any fragrance. These are supposed to be made for sensitive skin, low potential irritant um, formulations and both claim to be moisturizing, which I agree. They're both uh, rather heavy, <laughs> kind of that classic heavy sunscreen consistency, but they both uh, massage in really nicely, and even on medium to darker skin, skin tones, that zinc oxide does tend to um, kind of blend down to have a very minimal white cast. Um, the sensitive skin, I'd say minimal white cast. The flawless complexion, I honestly would say zero white cast. The only time that I noticed uh, a, a decent amount of white cast with the sensitive skin one, the non-tinted, is after several applications throughout the day. Like if I was out for the day or if I was going hiking, by the time I did my third layer, there was, you could absolutely see something. And on my arms, because this one's for face and body, on my arms, since they are a bit darker than my face, it was a little bit more noticeable. And then under heavy exercise or sweating, that's where my forehead would kind of a lot of people call it like, does it go white on you? Well, it does. It definitely kind of develops this kind of like drippy white effect if you're sweating excessively. Just some mild perspiration. It's not going to be too much of an issue. So something to keep in mind, this might be an excellent mineral based sunscreen for you to use while you're just inside doing indoor activities, minimal like perspiration, that type of thing. The Flawless Complexion is a really good one because it has almost a blurring effect. It matched really well to my skin tone. Um, and so I like using this going out, but the problem right now is with, since everyone's, when we're all wearing masks, my masks are like cloth masks and the tint gets all over the mask and can stain it. So um, I ended up doing the reverse. I wear the Flawless Complexion inside so I don't have to wear a mask. And then I was using this one going out because even with that bit of white cast, I honestly didn't mind. It wasn't it wasn't so bad that it was like someone could point and say like, oh, that's a bad sunscreen or not a good sunscreen match for his skin tone. It's pretty minimal and um, and something I was comfortable walking out the door wearing. So both of these were absolute wins. Kind of the first mineral based sunscreens that I've used that are so high in zinc oxide, 20 percent that didn't make me look like a total ghost. Like I really, really like these. So these are both wins. I'm saving the last little bits in case future sunscreens go poorly. I can fall back on these as my kind of, um, like my constants or yeah, like kind of my baseline and, and then incorporate a new sunscreen from my stash. But I just like to have these in case I need them in a pinch. I have probably a, a few days um, worth of applications left in each one or a couple days. So two wins there. Um, and then we have these, um, I'm going to really breeze through these three because I just did a whole brand review of them, but these are from the brand Solved Skincare. And so this is their cleansing water, uh, or coconut water cleansing foam from Solved Skincare. I did finish this one completely. Foam-based style cleanser, super gentle. It just uses coconut water 
and coconut-based surfactants to provide a really gentle cleanse that's also hydrating. So I'm, that's all I'm going to say about it because I did a pretty in-depth brand review. Go look at that for Solve Skin Care if you want to learn more, but this was an absolute win and I recommend it for pretty much anybody. Next up we have the Solve Skin Care. This is their coconut oil cleansing pads. Whoops. And this is the deluxe sample size. I also have the full size. I picked that up, but this only has about 11 of the pads missing. So this is what I'm going to hold on to as my backup in case another cleansing product I use doesn't go well because these were awesome. The cleansing pad is embossed, so you get a little bit of physical exfoliation. Um, you also get a coconut oil based kind of cleansing oil that gets dispersed on your face as you apply with the pad and it's only three ingredients coconut oil the um, emollient ingredient and then I think there's a preservative in there so it's a super basic uh, ingredients list but I found them to be incredibly effective at <clears throat> removing mineral sunscreens at just getting rid of surface dirt and impurities because that pad format gives you a little bit of kind of a buffing effect and it just is so elegantly done and yet so incredibly simple. So I'm in love with these. Emptied the deluxe sample, which had 20 pads, and I'm holding on to the rest of the full size for um, in case of emergency, I guess. And then the last one is also from Solve Skincare, and this is their Coconut Water Hibiscus Plus Rose Hip Toner. So this is just a pretty basic hydrating toner features 75 percent coconut water hibiscus and rose hip extracts and then it's actually i always show this in every video but it's got the actual petals of um hibiscus flower petals in the formulation so just a very elegant looking product kind of like more high-end looking and <clears throat> i found this to be super hydrating but even without sodium hyaluronate, some of those other classic hydrators, it has more of a deeply hydrating, almost nourishing feel. So it can kind of feel like a heavier essence or a light serum with a couple layers, even though it's so watery. So it's totally customizable depending on if you have dry skin or oily skin. I ended up doing two layers of this and my skin was left looking really glowy, had like a nice dewy kind of bounce to it. And they do that all with a super minimal ingredients list. None of their products have um, have uh, fragrance colors, parabens, sulfates, silicones. Um, they're vegan, no animal products, al alcohols removed, no mineral oil, no essential oils. All that stuff's gone. The products all have like around 10 ingredients or less. The pads only have three. And this toner especially feels like it's such a robust, like they must have like five different types of hyaluronic acid to go in different levels of your skin and all of that stuff. It's not there. It's just the coconut water, a couple extracts. Um, I think there's, I think there's glycerin in there, elant allantoin, and a couple preservatives and they call it a day. And yet it does so well. So very happy with that product. I'm holding on to the rest of this, just like I am the pads in case another toner I use doesn't work out. I can kind of hit the reset button with this. Very, very nice. All three of those products from Solve Skincare, I'd recommend to pretty much any skin type. They're great. So that's that um, one. I only have one sheet mask empty because I've been forgetting to hold on to the packages and I'm just throwing them away. But I used this last night. It's the Peach Slices Travel um, Aqua Glow Mask. I love this whole line. I've mentioned them in, in previous videos. The Aqua Glow, Aqua Glow Mask from Peach Slices, um, they're about $2.50 to $3 a piece, depending on where you pick them up. But they feature so many awesome, like traditional medicinal um, Asian beauty or Korean beauty or Hanbong ingredients that are so effective and just provide such an awesome result. So I got a lot of hydration out of this one, a little bit of brightening and soothing as well. It features ginger root extract, green tea leaf extracts, and Tella Asiatica bamboo water. It's got aloe leaf extract, various ceramides in it as well. And this, this brand just blows me away, this, um, this kind of sister brand to Peach and Lily, because they use a lot of the colors and the, the color schemes and the packaging all make it look like a very young brand, like kind of Etude House, Tony Moly kind of world. But if you flip the package over and look over the ingredients list, it's so much more 
um, thoughtful and results driven than I've seen from those other brands for the most part. I'm not to knock them, but I, when I think of like the Tony Moly and Etude House, I think of like packaging that looks like toys and then inside it's just a bunch of fragrance and some of their cleansers are still high pH and like j there's just, I feel like a lot of thought goes into the look of the outside of the product and the marketing and not so much the formulations just my opinion, but I feel like Peach Slices did the reverse. They they put together these awesome products with really, really great ingredients lists that you'd see on much higher end products, and then they kind of put them in a fun package. So I really like it, and I think it's a great entry point for people that are just getting into K-beauty or just getting into skincare in general and are on a limited budget. You can still get some kind of high-end quality formulations. Um, without breaking the bank. So Peach Slices and Peach and Lily in general, they're kind of like, last year I named Peach and Lily like my favorite brand of all of 2019. And uh, there's not very many brands that are gonna, uh, that are like gunning for that top spot this year. I feel like they're gonna continue just to be a, an awesome brand for me. So very happy with that. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about is, the da, 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 the by wish trend quad active boosting essence this is an essence that features honey and propolis it's also got black fermented black tea um, they label it as a ph balance essence so that's fine um, but it's meant to kind of help to amplify hydration um, help to amplify maybe a little bit of nourishment, including um, because of that honey and propolis. Fermented black tea is also gonna provide some hydration as well as um, some brightening power as well. There's lots of antioxidants in it. You also have willow bark extract, which is a natural form of BHA. So that should help with clearing, smoothing the skin, that type of thing. All that being said, even though this ingredients list is like, it'll do this, it covers this, it'll get you on that, you'll see benefits from this, like it checks off all the boxes. It didn't really do anything great for me in general. Like it was a nice hydrating essence, very nice and fluid, which I liked um, from a product that contains propolis and honey, because usually those can either be heavy or have a sticky tacky um, feel after you've used them. This doesn't have that, it just absorbs right in, you could layer it all day long. Um, but I just never saw any like boost from this boosting essence. Like the rest of my routine was just moving along fine. I was seeing results from other products, but in when I incorporated this, nothing really elevated. It just was like kind of a moderately hydrating essence and that was really about it. And I really wanna get back to essence products that are focused on like um, bifida ferment filtrate and galactomyces ferment filtrate, all those like heavy hitting brightening ingredients, maybe something with a high amount of niacinamide. Cause I was so impressed when I started um, using Korean essences or getting into essences in general. Cause those were the ones that they, everyone recommended you start with like the Misha Time Revolution First Treatment Essence, the Secret Key First Treatment Essence, the Neogen Real Ferment Micro Essence, like all of those essences that are all like heavy hitters and like the fermented rice ingredients or all of those types of things that provide a lot of brightening, they really wowed me when like the first year I used K-Beauty, I was like, this is something special. Like this is why everyone loves an essence. And then I started going down this road of like, this essence is focused on, on hydration and this essence is focused on soothing. And it started to feel like essence and toner were just melding into one and I was losing that like, like smack of brightening power that I loved so much from those classic essences. And I actually, when I start, stopped using this, I worked the IOPay, um, their bio essence into my routine and I'm, it's back baby. Like I'm getting back into the brightening mode. So I'm just like, so I'm just kind of over, I want, I think I know what I want in my essence and I'm not really willing to explore much else at this point and this doesn't fall into that. Like I want, some heavy hitting brightening power and I didn't get that from this. So I just bailed on it. I got a month in and said that's enough. So I'm gonna give the rest of this to a friend. Um, but that's it, that's all of my empties. 
Um, if I'm not mistaken, my phone just alerted me that I did get a package delivered while I was talking to you. So I'm going to turn this off, be right back, and we're going to do a very quick impromptu unboxing of just a couple products. So stay with me. I want to show you this stuff. Okay, we're back. This is going to be the death of me, that little flip. We're going to figure that out someday. If you have suggestions on how to like tame, it's just long enough that it just wants to, it's like, we're just going to start curling and I just cannot get it to, to listen. But anyway, so I just want to finish this up real quick with a quick unbox. It is a order from SoCo Glam and we have got over here. Um, we've got the Beauty of Josen. This is their repair serum with ginseng and snail mucin. These serums looked so interesting. Um, Eunice, uh, Uni Uni, um, did a giveaway with them a few weeks ago. Uh, for all three, there's a glow, a soothe, and a repair serum. Um, I took a look at all three of them. They're on Soko Glam now. I think they were $17 each. I took a look at all three. Um, I have so many serums and I have some serums that are focused on like brightening and I have some serums that are focused on soothing and hydrating, but I don't, I didn't have any that were um, focused on repairing and I haven't used anything with snail mucin in it in a very long time. So this one stood out at, over the other two. So I wanted to start with this one. The very first ingredient is ginseng root water over regular water. Snail secretion comes in at number four. So this is seemingly a pretty highly concentrated product. You've also got niacinamide in here. So if all the ingredients, the formulation, this one jumped out to me the most compared to the other. Out of all three, this one was the most interesting to me. So I'm going to start with this. I love the packaging. Even on the website, I was like, it just looks so classic, very traditional and medicinal. I mean, I mean, it, they're just beautiful. I love the um, kind of the look and the aesthetic of Beauty of Josen, and this will actually be the first product I've ever used from them. So I'm looking forward to using that. Then we have the Inward, Inward, Agas, or Agas. You can help me with that if you know it. AQ Herbal Mask. This is a traditional herbal blend. Once again, it was the ingredients list in kind of what they were um, promoting with this mask that made it jump out to me over the other products that are in this line. I believe there's a moisturizer and I think there's a serum as part of this inward line, at least that Soko Glam carries. Um, this has a uh, green tea leaf powder in it. So it's got the actual green tea leaves in here. Um, you also have um, the agas, <laughs> the extract. I'll have to research that a little bit more. Um, a couple other extracts in here as well, but it's a pretty stripped down formula. And this is a wash off mask that's supposed to be geared towards removing excess sebum, reducing oil production, giving you a little bit more of a purified or clarified uh, result. Almost, it almost was sold kind of like a, um, almost like a clay mask without being that intense. It's also focused on soothing as well. So when I read over the, 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 marketing and the product description, the ingredients list, I walked away thinking, oh, this might feel like the um, Neogen REP herbal mask, their herbal clay mask that's focused on soothing, that was like all based in chamomile and kale and clay. I love that one. So this looks almost like a jelly version of that. And just the product pictures, it all just looked very interesting. So out of everything from that inward line, this is the one I decided to go for. So I'm looking forward to trying that. And then the last thing and the whole reason for this order, to be honest, um, is because of the Good Skin Days Primetime Cleansing Toner. So this product was not necessarily delayed, but it was launched later on than the other three products. They have a moisturizer, the vitamin C serum, which I am coming up on week three with, and then the cream cleanser. So this is number four out of the Good Skin Days line, which is the in-house kind of flagship line for Soko Glam, whereas Then I Met You is kind of the higher-end brand that's kind of its own thing. This is tied directly to Soko Glam. So 
This is a hydrating micellar facial toner. So it's kind of almost like a cleansing. It's got that cleansing power, almost like a micellar water, but this is something that you can leave on. Hmm, interesting. So, um, it preps and hydrates skin, cleans and exfoliates. It's got pumpkin and papaya extract. It's a low pH formula. So once again, more focused on kind of that cleansing um, and some probably some mild exfoliation. What I'm seeing here is that they've placed, it's gonna be really hard to see on camera, but they placed a sticker over the original ingredients list. So you know the first thing I'm gonna do is peel that off and see what the differences are. My my thinking is that something happened or they decided to make a change. That's why it got delayed later than the rest. And they swapped something up with the, with the formulation. And I'm curious to see what that is, if anything, um, because they didn't change any of the claims on the package. So whatever they changed didn't change their thoughts about how it perform. That I am doing some detective work there, Charlotte. Um, <laughs> um, but um, we've got sugar maple extract, papaya fruit water in here, pumpkin fruit extract, um, artemisia, which is awesome to see, um, panthenol. There is some rose flower water and witch hazel in here, which eh, but they're low enough on the list that um, I wouldn't necessarily see that as a huge red flag. Um, there is essential oils in here for fragrance, which they're all towards the bottom, so take them or leave them. But yeah, a very interesting. There's turmeric in here as well. So yeah, it looks kind of like a, a hybrid between a micellar water, but I'm not seeing any um, any major, like I'm not seeing my, you, a like high amount of PEG or coconut based surfactants that make me say, oh, that's absolutely a wipe on wash off style product. This looks like something you could absolutely throw on and just leave on. So um, yeah, and I think sugar sugar maple might be a natural form of AHA. I'll, I'll have to look into that and comment if you know. But uh, but yeah, looks pretty interesting. I'm glad to I'm excited to throw it up against um, some other cleansing toners or kind of more low pH um, acid style toners to see if it performs the same way. Also, I'm, I'm excited to get it worked into my routine to put it alongside the. Da, 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 da. Uh, the C's the day serum. So like I said, this is their vitamin C. It uses 10% vitamin C. It's also got Camu Camu in it. Um, I've been using this for about three weeks now, maybe a little bit less. And I'm surprised that I haven't used more. A little bit does go a long way with this, but I'll have a full review of, of these as I use them. And then I'll probably do a whole brand review once I'm all done. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but that's it, unboxing. July empties. I can't wait to recycle what I can recycle and kind of clear out my empties box for the month. So thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions about these products, need some additional information, please comment below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and um, I'll put uh, links for each product in the description as well. So thanks. Uh, st oh, and stay glowing always. Bye.